Hello, it's Nick. I'm living in Mariupol, Russia, and today I'm gonna tell you how Mariupol citizens survived the siege in March and April 2022. That was hell for everyone. At the background I am gonna place videos about rebuilding of Mariupol. It isn't my videos, I found it in YouTube and I will left links on these peoples who live here so you can watch them if you are interested in this. This terrible war started in 24th of February, you know it. But in the first days in Mariupol shops still worked and I bought enough food for a few weeks, made a water reserve and everything was okay. Till the 2nd of March. We had electricity, we had water, we had everything. So I just seated in home and played Minecraft with my friends and watched news about the war. I was hope that this war will end in a week or two. Will Mariupol will just change the flag, join Russia, and no one will die. And one of the reasons why I hate Ukraine is that city government uh, of Mariupol didn't evacuate anyone for almost a week. They just told us that we should stay in Mariupol and everything will be all right. We should not evacuate, not panic, and even more, the departure was closed by them. In the days I even seen videos where Azov soldiers just shooting citizens who are trying to leave. And uh, so encirclement by Russian was established in 1st of March, maybe the 2nd, around there. So it was a week from a start of invasion to encirclement. But Azov didn't let anyone out and no one uh, evacuated because Ukrainians just needed a life shield. I don't know anyone who left before outskirts of Mariupol was liberated. So, for us, everything started in the 2nd of March. I will remember this date forever. Electricity, water, heating, internet was shut down. Mobile work network was shut down too, and apocalypse started. Most people hadn't food and water, so they started looting shops. Big shops uh, firstly was looted by Azov. Uh, Azov troopers uh, took canned food and medicines, and other people took their remains. Many people died while looting shops, because at this time uh, both sides already massively shelled each other. And uh, there, no, maybe not there, later uh, were graves in each yard. Many people fetched water from puddles and melted the snow. I was really lucky to have reserve, actually. But we still had gas, so we could heat and cook food. 7th of March we lost it, it disappeared, so we needed to cook food on the fire. This March was really cold and snowy, unlike other marches in Mariupol, it's city on the sea, so usually uh, spring is kind of warm. But uh, this time in my house I had like 2 or 3 degrees at night, it's really cold and someone even had frost at their homes. And we had nothing. Ukraine didn't organize nothing, not food, not shelters. They just sacrificed us and nothing. And at this time, Ukrainians used the us as the life shield. There were their bases on many schools. And they fired from behind homes where people lived. And by return fire, uh, Russian destroyed many houses. And now I will show you my school where I studied before war which was used to a fire from a life shield. This is my school. I studied here before war started. And when here was fighting, Ukrainian soldiers used it as a base. Here it is, buses. Uh, Ukrainians used them to transport soldiers. And they also fired from here. Uh, they used this position to fire, fire to there, and here was houses, but they were completely burned when Russians answered with artillery fire. And now it's been demolished, I don't know, I hope you can see it on video, maybe I'll go closer. 
And also I probably add a video which I filmed <laughs> when war was going, fighting. I climbed to a roof. Well, I'll probably add that video. Uh, here was houses. They were completely burned, they were fully black. And Russia already demolished it. Вылезли на крышу школы. Ух. Там особенно тяжко. Край самый. Туда пришлось. On the street nearby me, Ukrainian tank fired and then just hide behind house where civilians were living and it just used it as a shelter. So now even neutral people here and even people who don't like Russia, everyone hates Ukraine here because of cases like this. Anyway, around 10th of March, I don't remember precise date, uh, the assault had begun. That was the worst day for me and for my district. Uh, the house trembled really hard every hour. It shaked. From the window I could see only smoke. Also on Shevchenko Avenue I filmed a video from there. Where a Russian tank is like 15 meters, 50 meters from my house. And my neighbor brought me military knife from that tank. Uh, unfortunately tankista Tankists uh, are died. Hope they will rest in peace. And also even cooking food on fire was really entertaining, you know. If you hear a whistling, you had four seconds to drop everything and hide. And that, that was really hell. And then, around 19th of March, my quarter was liberated. And the first thing I heard about Russians is that they are giving hot water and food for everyone, providing medical assistance, given to charge phones. In the first day, giving food wasn't even organized, they just stopped at the middle of the street and started to give food from the car to everyone. Probably it, uh, this food was just taken from warehouses near Mariupol. I didn't took it, I didn't need to, because right in that days my neighbors departed to Donetsk or to Kiev, to, to Donetsk, yeah, to Donetsk, and left their food to me. And then, after two or three days, Russians started to give real humanitarian aid. Like seven or ten kilo on a person. Once a month and also five liters of clean, cl cleared water. Five liters uh, actually nothing, but, well, it's clear water which you can drink. And for this humanitarian you should stand in a line from four to eight hours and then they started to give us not only food, but also free SIM cards with free internet. But we then had no covering of internet. And also free baths, bath and water. So we could wash. Uh, and yeah. And also you could charge your phone and if you want to stand five hours for it. And I stand it. And at that time my district was almost safe from arrivals from shelling. And then started slow revival of Mariupol. In the middle of April, April we got a mobile network. It was our first contact with outside world. I really cried when I first spoke to Grandpa after almost two months. We had nothing connecting us with our outside world. world. And then internet appeared. And also, network and internet was not in all city, it was only one, on one place, and fortunately for me it wasn't far from me, like a kilometer or two. And people started to sell, sell what they looted. Also someone from Donetsk and from villages near Mariupol brought bread to the city and started selling bread, and bread is, was really rare, because it finishes really fast. Uh, also, Russians started uh, delivered free water to our homes and to remove debris. Even shops uh, were open, but only two or three for all big city. 
Also, Russians opened the school and I was there. It was around 18 of April. Uh, but despite city started its revival, the electricity and water in my home appeared only on June. So it's it was awful life still. I only had books to entertain me and one friend. And in the 22nd of April I left to Donetsk. I didn't want to cover politics in this video, you know, it's kinda dirty themes, but I can tell few things. Firstly, when I got the internet for first time after fightings, I was really shocked that most of the world supporting Ukraine. I mean, I stand in lines for water, for humanitarian, for charging phone, and all people that I speak to hate it as of and don't like it or hate Ukraine. The battalion Azov is just horrible. They just shoot at everyone at curfew, tortured people, shoot at civil, civil houses, their sniper shoot at civilians too, and they are used tactics of scorched earth, scorched land, I don't know how to pronounce it, how to say it. And it is in the city where a lot of people were left, like me. Even my pro-Ukrainian friends think that battalion Azov fighters are assholes. Unlike usual armed forces of Ukraine. Well, that's opinion of pro-Ukrainian friends. And what I heard about the Russian soldiers is they're just the soldiers. No one hated them, no one lo loved them. Just usual guys from... Most of them was from Donetsk, from Rostov, they are living near. And most of the people I spoke to, they was new neutral. I mean, they don't care even about politics. They just failed to understand why Berdansk, Berdansk is captured or liberated, as you want, without shoots. And we in Mariupol could die each second for, for what, for Ukraine? I mean, no one cares about Ukraine, it's <laughs> we are Russian, no. even those who think that they are Ukrainian uh, don't definitely not ready to die for Ukraine. And the second thing I want to tell you is that almost now no one is in Ukraine is spoke against war. They supported Nazis from Azov, said that Mariupol will never surrender. I remember when in the middle of March, when fighting still go on, uh, some of my neighbors uh, had a radio, I don't know, I don't remember, in the car or just radio on batteries, and uh, he heard Zelensky's speech that Kyiv will not surrender, Mariupol will not surrender, and uh, it wasn't really pleasant to hear it when you under shelling, because if he just give us to Russia, I mean, why not, we speak Russian, we are not Ukrainians. And how many lives could be saved, huh? And if he cooked his food on fire with me, under Mortis firing, would he say the same? Hm. Well, no one in Ukraine spoke against war. Of course, I can tell you many more, but I think it's enough for today. It's hard for me to speak on language which I never spoke before, except school lessons of English. I hope this video will be seen by many people, so many Western citizens will know the truth. And also, in the near future, I plan to make a video about the rebuilding of Mariupol and about perspectives of Mariupol in Ukraine and in Russia and, well, I've got something to show to the world. Well, I wish you a good day.